Hello again. Welcome to Hangar 51. My name's Kenny. Um, today we're going to look at the uh, Fly Zone F4U Corsair. Comes uh, about assembled. This is by far the easiest plane. I mean, literally, you put three screws in it and the prop on it. That's it. It comes out of the box, the wing is one piece. Everything's individually bagged in, uh, you know, like the bubble wrap bags. Um, the vertical stab here just comes off. There's no uh, linkage to hook up to it. The linkage is done inside. There's a little, um, um, there's a bent wire coming out of the fuselage and a pocket that it goes in. So when you push the rudder down in, the little bent wire goes up into the pocket, and that's how that's connected. You do just have to take, there's a Z-Bend link on the elevator, and as you're assembling that, which the whole thing goes on, um, it's one piece here with this nose cone, and it literally just slides into place, plugs in, and there's one screw in the back. So you put that on first, you put your, put your Z-Bend in the linkage, and slide that on, and put your one screw through the back, and then you set this down through the foam hole here and line up a little linkage and straight and then there's one screw in the bottom through the uh, tailwheel gear to hold the, the, ver the vertical stab on and then the only other one is when you put the wing on there's one bolt that holds the wing on. That's it. And everything is already assembled, done, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I really love this model. This is this is one of my favorites so far. Um, uh, just so you know, I don't get paid to do these reviews. I have to buy everything you see. Uh, nobody's sending me any free stuff to review. If you want to send me free stuff, as a matter of fact, Fly Zone. If you're watching this from Hobbyco, uh, I've noticed nobody's reviewed your uh, Zero. Yeah, you have a, a Mitsubishi Zero, I guess, uh, that's uh, about this size, and I don't see any reviews on it send it to me. I would love to review it. Uh, if it's anything like this model, I am, I'm going to love it because I love this one. Um, some of the features, as you can see, nav lights, um, pretty bright too. They really show up nice. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a strobe light flashing there. So very nice. Um, now it doesn't come with the three-bladed prop. I'm going to explain that. comes with this two-bladed prop. Flies awesome with this on there. I mean, it, it, the plane is very light. It only weighs, um, flight weight is three pounds. So it's very light. And that's one of the reasons I bought it. I bought it because it looks good. The paint scheme is beautiful. The lights, I love the lights. Uh, I love the retracts. And then it's only three pounds. So it's a foam plane. If it hits the ground, three pounds is not a lot of authority. It's it's not going to thud the ground and break into a million pieces. It's probably just going to bounce. So if it crashes, probably not going to be a lot of damage. You know, three pounds is just not very much weight. This is the lightest plane of this size I've seen anywhere, especially with retracts. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, this is a 10, or is this a 12? Uh, this is a this is a 12, this is a 12 6 prop, two blade. And the two blades are more efficient. Doesn't look scale sitting on the table like it does with this nice three blade I've got on there, but it it's very fast with this on And I mean very fast. Now, for relativity, what I mean by very fast, listen, I, I started pylon racing back in the 70s. You know, a quarter midget pylon plane is about the size of this, a little smaller, goes 160, 180 miles an hour. Not scale speed, real speed. Um, go on YouTube, look up quarter midget pylon racing, RC, or look up Formula One, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, incredibly fast airplanes. So when I say this thing's fast, it ain't that fast, but it's fast. I mean, it, with this prop on it, it's fast. It's probably pushing 100 miles an hour. I would guess in level flight, it's probably in the 85 mile an hour range. And if you're dive bombing, it's going to probably break 100. It's very fast. And it'll go vertical 
straight to the clouds. I mean, it, it flies phenomenally with this prop on it. But unfortunately, sitting on the table here, it doesn't look so good. You know? And it's black. I painted the yellow tips to try to dial it up a little bit. Um, so, but it flies with such authority, and because it's so light with that prop on it, I figured I could get away with a three-bladed prop. And I did. It works very good. This is, this is a 12-8 uh, Master Air Screw prop. And of course, I rounded the edges and painted the yellow tips just for more scale effect. But um, it uh, uh, it flies great on this prop. Doesn't fly as fast as it did with that one, and it won't go vertical to the stars. But it still flies with plenty of authority. Flies great, and now it looks correct. I mean, that's what's supposed to be on it—a three or four bladed prop. It's what's supposed to be on it. And now that's what's on it, and it looks great, and it still flies phenomenal. So, um, it's up to you. I mean, it comes with this prop, and hey, Fly Zone, Hobby Co., hey, throw a prop in the box. Every other plane I've gotten like this is, comes with two props. So, put this one in the box, and put that one in the box, and let, let the pilot decide whether he wants super fast or super scale. You know, I mean, what's the prop going to cost you? A couple bucks. Throw it in the box. Let him let let the pilot decide which which one he wants. That's my opinion. You know. Um, anyway, um, the tail wheel is on springs uh, for override, but it does not retract. But the main gear does. I'm going to show you that. It's very fast. Don't like that. Uh, not a big deal, but it would be nice if it was more scale speed. So. Um, and of course, if you have a fancy radio, I'm flying it with the tactic radio that comes with it. I bought a ready-to-fly version, and uh, it, uh, you know, if you have a Fataba or a Spectrum or some radio, you can actually go into the settings and s turn the speed down, and then you can get a nice scale-looking retract out of it. But this one, uh, they're very fast. So that's scale but cleans up nicely. It, this is beautiful. Very, very clean, and that helps. The, pack, the fact that it's three pounds cleans up this nicely, and this two-bladed prop makes this a, a winner. This thing flies unbelievably well, and it's just so graceful in the air. Um, it, it, it's just, I, I can't say enough good things about this plane. I, I absolutely love it. Um, super easy to build. Instructions, super great instructions. Um, you know, very detailed in English, not not Chinglish. It's English. Um, the only thing I didn't see in here, and I and I forgot to look it up. Um, the tail wheel's not straight, and I haven't figured out exactly how to adjust it. I'm sure, it's not a big deal. There are a couple of screws under there. I'm thinking I just have to loosen those two screws and readjust it to the springs, and then tighten it back up. I haven't done that yet. Not a big deal. Um, uh, because I bought the Ready to Fly, it came with a uh, 2100 milliamp three cell battery. Of course, the Tactic receiver was already in it, and then I got the transmitter as well, and I got a balance charger. And if you've seen one of my other videos where I talk about these Ready to Fly versions, it can be a good deal. Um, again, this was an additional. Um, I think it was 60 bucks more to buy it ready to fly that got me a transmitter versus the bind and fly that came with the tactic receiver and I was going to have to buy an AnyLink system to hook to my radio which was 45 bucks. So now for $15 more, okay, I got the battery pack, I got the charger. Yeah. So, you know, the battery pack and charger alone are and this particular charger was a um, cigarette lighter charger, and I don't have one of those. So now I have a balanced charger to plug into my cigarette lighter in the car. So I can have one charger on the battery with the alligator clips. I have this one in the cigarette lighter. I can be, yeah, I can be charging batteries all over the place. So um, it just made more sense to me to buy the the, the ready to fly, get the transmitter. Don't need to be worrying about the AnyLink system or all that hoopla or taking the receiver out, throwing it away, putting my own receiver in it. Of course, that's an option, but like I said, it was 60 bucks more. I got a battery pack, I got a charger, I got a radio I can use, 
um, you know, I probably am going to upgrade this to a different radio eventually, uh, just so I can slow the retracks down. Really, there's no other reason to. This radio works fine. I've flown this a bunch, um, but um, I would like to slow the retracks down, and it's very easy to do with the DX9 or one of those fancier radios that has all the mixing and trimming and adjusting, and so. So I might end up doing that eventually, but for now, it's just, you know, I took it out of the box, it was assembled in five minutes, ready to fly, way to go, and uh, and it just flies beautifully. Um, let's see, anything else? I have a couple bad things about it I'm going to tell you. They're, they're small, not a big deal, but I do want to point them out. Um, let's see, uh, I think that's all. I mean, it's, it's, I wanted the review as far as good stuff. I mean, it's just a, a phenomenal airplane. I, I can't say enough good things about it. So now I'm going to say a couple bad things about it. Um, the first bad thing is the uh, the access for the battery, the hatch. Um, it's got a great little locking system. I love this. It's, it's an actual plastic mechanical snap lock. It, it clips into a, another piece in the fuselage. So you have to actually unclip it. So it's not magnets. It's not going to blow off. If you clip it back in where it clips, it's not coming off. There's no way it's coming off in flight. My problem is, is look at how small that hole is. Okay, I mean, I've got girly hands, tiny little girly hands, and I can't get my hand in there. There's no way I'm getting my hand in there for anything. So the battery pack goes across the front of the plane here, all the way up inside this engine cone, you know, the cowling. That's how far forward the battery goes. There's no way you can get your hand in there to touch that battery, and there's Velcro in there to hold it in. So you got to kind of fish it in there, and shove it down in there and push it forward with the tips of your fingers. Now, if you've got big, long fingers, it might be easier, but you still can't get your hand down in here. And then to get the battery out, there's only one way to get it out. You've got to grab the wires and yank it by the wires. And I hate pulling the battery out by the wires. So, you know, fly zone, beautiful airplane, make the hatch bigger. You know, cut it down into the side, you know, do it all the way, follow the panel line here, have the canopy come off with it, have the whole thing come off. Something different than this, because this is a bad, and it's a small thing. Again, I ain't knocking this airplane. I love the airplane. But this is just a suggestion. You know, definitely make this bigger. This is not, and, and the other part of what's bad about this is, um, now, it already came. Look, did you hear that click? See, that's how positive. Look at the white around the hatch, Okay. Now, it already looked like that when I took it out of the box, but it's getting worse because every time I take the battery in and out, my hands are rubbing the side and I'm rubbing the paint off. You know, paint doesn't stick to foam very well anyway. Um, that, that's not their fault. Have all foam planes, if, you know, if you grab a hold of a foam plane and hold onto it for any length of time, when you take your hand away, you're probably going to pull paint off with your fingers. I mean, it's just inevitable. That's what foam is. So every time you go in and out the battery door, you're going to rub the foam off. You know, because there's no way to do it without touching the sides. So the more I play with this, the worse that's going to look. Okay, so that's one of my little pet peeves. Not a big deal. And now I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, because there's an easy fix. I mean, it's not going to correct the problem, but at least we can make the plane look better. And you're going to see me do it live. I haven't done this yet. Um, this this is a little a little hard to get off sometimes. But I still like it. I mean, it, I like I like the hatch. I like the, the latch on the hatch. I just wish the hatch was bigger. Okay, so what I did is I went out and bought a tester's paint marker. This is this is a paint pen. It's not a permanent marker. You can use that as well. This is just a paint pen. It's got paint in it. It's not the right color blue, but it's close. Okay, and it's going to look better than white. So what I'm going to do is just quickly um, touch this up on the sides here. This is, you know, I know I'm on camera, but I wanted you to see this. I wanted you to see it live. I want you to see me touch it up, you know, after the fact. And, uh, you know, how, did I, how easy was it to do or what did I do to do it? You know, I wanted you to see what exactly I'm doing and how the results are. 
Now, again, it's not the right color blue, but it's close, and this is going to look a whole lot better than the white. This is probably close enough that you might not even be able to detect it on video. The color might match close enough that it's going to look right on camera, but in person you're going to see the color difference a little bit. But it's not bad. And again, it's better than the white, so... Um, So we'll just finish touching this up. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. You can go out, if you want to go to Lowe's or someplace and buy matching paint, go ahead. But I find I'm flying this a lot. This is going to become a regular thing. I want to make it easy. So this is easy. This is, you know, I can put the cap on and carry this with me and everything. You go buy mixed paint. You're going to have a paintbrush. You're going to clean the brush. You know, yeah, it might look better, you know, static and, and be, you know, prettier, but functionality wise probably not going to be the best result you know this is going to be functional I can touch this up right at the right at the flight line and uh, there's a spot right there I'm not even going to wait for it to dry. I'm just going to touch it up, put the hatch on, and this dries fast. This, this tester's paint pen really does dry pretty fast. I think I got it all. I think it's it. Okay. If it's not, like I said, I got more and we can finish it. But now, let's put the lids back on here and lock that back down. Like that. And now, how does that look? I don't know. I can, I'm, I'm doing it live. I don't know how it looks, but you're seeing it. I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to actually watch the video and see what it looks like. But um, so that's a way to fix that problem quickly, easily, looks a lot better than the white, you know, hanging out, and, um, you know, and then it, the next time you rub more paint off, just paint it again. Pretty simple. So, that's one of my pet peeves. Oh, there's a little spot back here. Let me get that. Um, I really think uh, that hatch needs to be bigger. Um, just for access, it's, it's very hard to get the battery in and out of it. There's no way to get the battery out without yanking on the wires, and I'm not a big fan of that. And that's the only way you're getting the battery out. So, um, the next thing, okay, they're using a single servo on this with a thin wire. No bell cranks here now. It's just a wire that's that's doing a, 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 a wind around. It's, it's actually coming out of the bottom of the where the horns are, and it wraps up around and comes to the middle of the plane, both sides. And there's a single servo with the arm, and both wires come in like this and are crimped in. So now when the arm does this, it pushes and pulls the wire, which makes the ailerons go up and down. Functional, but it will never center. So, you know, you make a nice right bank. You return left to level flight, let go of the stick, and it just keeps drifting left because the servo can't center. There's too much flex in these push rods, the way they're set up. So it's going to drift a little more left, and you're going to have to give it a little more right to straighten it back out. And when you fiddle with it, you can finally get it level. Again, not a big deal. Uh, you know, it's easily fixed. I mean, as far as just over, you know, restick it until you get it centered. But it would just be nice for it to crisply stop and and stay there. You know. If they had to put a servo on each control horn, like everybody else does in the wings, it would, we wouldn't have this issue. You'd have nice sh short little push rods. The servos would center, and they don't have to be digital. A regular servo would have centered, and it would be crisp and straight, and we wouldn't have this drifting thing. So, a little pet peeve there. Again, not a big deal. Um, it's not even a big enough deal that I think I would probably waddle it out and put my own servos in it. It, it really flies so good. I just, you know, that to me is a little bit of a, you know, if, if it flies on one to make this plane better, 
they'd make this hatch bigger and they'd put servos in the wings so that the ailerons are rock solid and the hatch is, is uh, you know, accessible. Um, other than that, um, God, I don't think there's anything else. I mean, it's just a great, great airplane. I really can't say enough good things about this. If, if you buy this plane, you will be very, very happy with it. Now, it's a, um, I think it's a 1250 wingspan. Let me look here. Uh, yeah, 1230. 1230-millimeter 1230 wingspan. Um, again, three pounds. It's very light. Uh, that's the lightest plane I've seen this size. And um, great retracts. They're mechanical, um, servo-less mechanical, and they don't use a drag link system to rotate the wheels. It's actually beveled gears. And the gears, as, as it rotates up, the gears roll on each other and twist the wheel as it goes up. So it's got nice beveled gears in there, and uh, it's not a drag link system. Uh, works great. Um, you know, I, like I said, everything about this plane is awesome. I, I really like it. A couple of little pet peeves. You know, the prop thing, not a big deal. Um, I mean, like I said, I put it, and I'm not, I'm not positive this is the correct prop. I just, that's what the hobby shop had in a 12, you know, something close to a 12.6. Was a 12.8? A 12.6 might be better. I don't know. Um, and I'll probably do some more testing, but it flew great on this prop. So it's not like if you go buy a 12.8, it won't fly out. It's going to fly great. It's not going to be as fast as it was with this by far, I mean. But, hey, in different days, you might be in a fast mood day. You might be in a scale mood day. It, it takes a second to change the prop. Now, there is one little issue with that. Um, the spinner that comes with this is, alum uh, is plastic. It's a little plastic spinner. And this prop is a lot thinner than that one. And they have the threads recessed back pretty far. So when you put this prop on, the plastic spinner is no longer going to fit. So I machined this myself. This is aluminum. I took a piece of billet aluminum and made a copy of the plastic one and extended the threads out so that it, because there's only a little nub of thread left on here now because this prop is so much thicker. So you're going to have, if you buy this master screw, you're not going to be able to put your spinner back on. You're going to have to go buy something like this. And I imagine that these are available. I don't know. I didn't look. I just threw it on my lathe and made one. So um, if, you know, don't, don't send me an email asking me to make you one. Um, I'm going to tell you why. It's, it's a, I don't have a CNC machine. I don't have, a, you know, an indexing screw machine. It's automated and it's just set it and forget it. I had to stand in front of the lathe literally for hours to make that. Um, so if you want me to make you one, I will, but it's not going to be cheap, okay? You know, we're talking time and material. So whatever hourly rate we agree on, and it takes me probably about three hours to make plus the aluminum, you know, you're probably looking at a $30, $40, $50 dollar spinner. I'm sure you can find one cheaper than that, okay? Now, I didn't drill a hole through it to torque because I'm not using it to hold the, the, this prop on. I'm using the regular nut to hold the prop on. This is just decorative, okay? And you don't have to put it on. You can just leave it off. Um, you know, it'd fly fine without it. It's not going to look as good, but if you're, gonna go, if you're doing this much to get a scale-looking propeller, you want a scale-looking spinner. So that's why I made it out of aluminum. The plastic one looked good. No, nothing wrong with the plastic one. It fit, you know, if you're flying this prop, it fits fine. You know, the plastic one would look great, but I made my own. So... You might run into that issue. That was my solution. You know, look around. I'm sure somebody else makes a spinner like that for their plane that might work. Um, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, it's just it wouldn't be economical for me to go into business making them. Uh, you know, they're just I don't think they're going to sell enough of these planes for me to make, you know, minimum of 1,200 of them on an indexing screw machine. So, um, anyway, I, you know, one-offs. I did my own. But it was labor intensive. It took a lot of hours to sit there on the lathe and, you know, machine it all out. So, but, you know, for me, it was, you know, my own little project. It was fine. So, but like I said, if, you're, if you want me to make you one, don't expect it to be cheap because it's, it, it's a lot of hours. So, 
other than that, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm done. I think, um, awesome model, awesome, awesome model. You, you, you will absolutely not be disappointed with this one. It flies beautifully in the air uh, with the great tracks up, you know, the, the paint scheme, you know, doing flow, slow flybys and rolling and just all the scale maneuvers that one of these planes does, the thing looks phenomenal. And it just flies great, looks great. Um, I mean, you could set this on your coffee table if you wanted to display a piece. It looks that good. Um, so, I highly recommend this model. This, I, this is one of my favorites. I really love this thing. And again, Fly Zone, Hobby Co. Send me one of your zeros. I want to review it. All right? That'll be my first free plane. If you send me one, I will definitely be give it an honest review. I'm not going to, you know, if, you, if there's something about it I don't like, I'm going to tell you. So, but that, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to give people an honest review, not a bought review, so that they know if I tell them it's a good plane, I mean it's a good plane. I wasn't paid to tell them it was a good plane. But I'd really like to do your zero, so send me one. And other than that, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. If you like my got comment at the bottom, like me on Facebook, like me here on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you on the flight line. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.